Welcome back to the next part of our interview with Sabah El Nasari, professor of political science at York University, and we're discussing the future of Iraq. Uh, professor, uh, both Obama and McCain's plan have a lot to do, uh, have, are assuming that the current political configuration will stay more or less as is. Uh, but tell us, talk to us about the elections coming scheduled in October and how this alliance and configuration of stars may change. This is the, the attack like in March, April, May in Basra against the Southern Movement was part of this scenario to secure the, the, the election for the current... So let's just for viewers that may not know, uh, El, Muqtada El Sadr is a nationalist cleric uh, who's been uh, very opposed to the U.S. Uh, occupation and does not get along very well with the current government. Yeah, exactly. And he has more legitimacy and credibility within Iraq because he was uh, inside Iraq all those years. Part of his family was killed uh, in Iraq. So uh, comparing to the current uh, the governing elite in Iraq, who used to live in, the, in exile for the last 20, 20, 30 years, the Iraqi people knows exactly who al Sadr and, and the thing he is doing the last decades and so on. So he has more legitimacy within Iraq. People, especially the popular classes in Iraq. So the, this attack on Basra, you've pointed out before, by the Maliki government, had a lot to do with weakening uh, al Sadr movement with these coming elections. Exactly. So, so where are we at with the elections? There's a fight taking place over how they'll be held. Yeah. The, the, the fascinating thing about this election is, for the first time, it will, it will be contested. You know, all the elections before, they were orchestrated by the United States. And in the previous big election, the satirist movement boycott. Exactly. So it was clear right from the beginning who will win the election. All the Iraqis knew exactly who will be, you know, uh, um, the, the Mr. President, who will be the president, etc. It was orchestrated. But this time, it's really contested. So that's why al-Maliki and the United States are not really sure if al-Maliki and al-Hakim and so on will, will win the election in the middle and the south of Iraq. Now, the, the October election are for provincial, provincial leadership. It, it won't affect the national leadership this election, is that correct? Yes, but the thing is so important about this provincial election, because the provinces, they have um, um, autonomous status and they have enormous power vis-a-vis -vis the, the central government. You know, we have a, a weak central government. So if you look at the Kurdistan, they have enormous power when it comes to oil, when it comes to security, etc. So if the al Sadr movement win, would win the election in Baghdad, in al Kurd, in Basra, in Omar, etc., they will have not only the majority within the provincial parliaments, but also they can decide about oil contracts, about the U.S. military bases. With Basra the being the southern center of the Iraqi oil industry. Exactly. And that's why it's so central for the Maliki government and for the United States to make sure that the current constellation of forces would win the election. Any shifts here could jeopardize the whole project of al-Maliki and the United States. So wh where exactly are we at? Are we going to see elections in October? And if not, when? And, and what's happening? The thing is, I think if the, um, if, the, if the current government is sure that they would win the election, that the southern movement is so weakened that they will not uh, win the majorities, they will do the election. But if they realize that the southern movement is popular, and that probably they win the, the, the election. They will postpone the election. They will use like uh, any kind of excuse uh, uh, to, to postpone the election. So the election in the province of Basra, where the city of Basra yeah. is to be found, yeah. is going to be one of the critical ba election battles, yeah. given so how much oil is at stake and how strong the satirist forces have been. What do you know of uh, w what the balance of forces are now in Basra? Vis-a-vis um, -vis the elections. Yeah. Before the uh, uh, the Al Hakim groups, especially the Al Badr militias, they used to control Basra, uh, especially after 2003, 2004. But then things were shifted, and Al Mahdi uh, army of Al Sadr movement take control of the majority in Basra. So that's why that's why the attack in March and April and May to weaken the Al Sadr movement in Basra and strength. It may weaken them on the ground militarily, but what will be the consequences in terms of uh, an open vote? This is the thing which they cannot uh, predict. They, they are thinking by weakening the movement militarily, they could weaken it also politically. At the same time, they are trying to uh, secure a kind of political capital of the current situation vis-a-vis -vis the United States in order to tell the Iraqi people we have more sovereignty now, we have more legitimacy now, we are capable of you know, acting independently, we are setting timetable, etc. for the United States. So they're trying to gain a kind of legitimacy vis-a-vis -vis our southern movement. This is the only thing they can do now in order to mobilize uh, the voter for their own election in October. But they are not sure that if they, they can secure the majority. So with the best plans laid by mice and men, um, 
Obama's plans for withdrawal might change if a satirist victory in Basra. Definitely. And I would argue that probably, it's a hypothesis, but it could be possible. If the Assad movement would win the election in October in, in the major provinces in Iraq, probably in order to secure the presence of the U.S. troops in Iraq and U.S. military bases, they could provoke an attack on Iran. Because this is the only option to extend the presence of the U.S. troops in Iraq beyond December 2008. So it's very critical. Well, is this, a, is, it's hard, is this is, we now get into speculation, but is this a, perhaps a dividing line between the McCain and Obama presidency, yeah. where a McCain presidency, would, exactly. it's hard to imagine, would accept that kind of defeat in Iraq. Yeah. Uh, with some of the language we're hearing from Obama, perhaps Obama would live with this situation. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. It depends on, uh, on ground. Things happen on ground. And I believe in the, in, the, in the last analysis that things will be determined in Iraq on ground by the Iraqi people and not what Obama and McCain think. But the, the thing is, what I'm afraid of is that if, if the Southern movement would win the election in October, that the current stop, uh, uh, administration would provoke a, an attack on Iran to create fait accomplice for the next administration. Well, how likely is that election uh, in Iraq to be in October? There seems to be so many fights taking place about the regulations. Exactly. It sounds like it's going to be postponed at any rate. That's, this could be the, uh, the, the, the reason why they are trying to bypass the Iraqi parliament in many issues. Like when it comes to oil now, we don't have oil law, but they're trying to open contract with, 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 with corporations. When it comes to security uh, issues, they're trying to bypass the parliament to create a memorandum of understanding. So they're trying to bypass all these laws, constitutional law, and create fait accompli on ground. So the, the, the election could be also postponed if they're not sure they will win the election. So all eyes on these Iraqi provincial elections. Thank you for joining us, Professor Nasadi, and thank you for joining us for this series of interviews with Sabal Nasadi. And if you enjoyed them and would like to see more content like this, please look over my shoulder where you will see a donate button. Uh, we depend on you for our financial support. Thank you.